In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our midst. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you. Today the church puts the last Sunday in front of us before we start on the journey of Holy Week. And on this Sunday, the church remembers one of the great saints in our church who is St. Mary of Egypt. And we have heard the story of her life in full last Wednesday evening in the prayer and briefly this morning as well. But for all of us, what we can take from that story is a very simple thing, that no matter what our history is and no matter how our life has been spent so far, we can come back because our Heavenly Father is waiting for us as long as we have true repentance like St. Mary. St. Mary was an example of true repentance, of sincere repentance. And for 47 years, she spent of her life in the desert trying to recover the image of God that was imprinted in her. And for her and in her story, there is a lot of hope for all of us, no matter what we did in our life, as long as we are ready to come back, our Heavenly Father is going to be there to welcome us. On the other hand, we hear this gospel that is giving us the last hints before we get into Holy Week. And we have heard the exchange that happened between James and John and our Lord Jesus Christ, and then with all the apostles about what they were asking him to give them. And it's incredible, what is inc incredible in this story, if you noticed, that Christ in the very beginning is telling them about the suffering that he was going to endure for them and for everyone. And uh, he tells them all kinds of things. And if you know that in the Gospel of St. Mark, this is the third time he tells them about that. So this is not the first time that they are faced with this reality that Christ is going to be, or their superhero is going to be crucified or killed. This is the third time he tells them, and still they could not understand. One, if we put ourselves in their shoes, we might be afraid, like them, to lose our master. We might be scared of the reality that our beloved master was going to be crucified. So they would gloss over it. The only thing they were fixated on, the, the fact he told them about his heavenly kingdom coming. So what they asked him is, let us be on your right side and your left side. But they did not understand what the whole story is about. And what they could not understand specifically is that how could death bring life? That's the main issue for them. So rather than thinking about death, they figured that it is better to think about the kingdom that's coming. Let's get our position there. It's better than worry about death because we are so afraid of it. We better not think about it. But not only James and John were in that position. If you notice also, the other disciples had the same understanding. They were angry because they thought that James and John wanted a better position than themselves. They were expecting the same thing for themselves as well. But those James and John wanted even a better position for them. So our Lord, in his patience, brought them to himself and told them, do you want to be the first? You have to be the last. You want to be a leader? You have to be a servant first. Because if I am the master, came over to be the servant for everyone, then you better be a good follower of me and be a servant first before you ask to be on my right side or my left in my kingdom. So what does that mean to be a leader? How can they be leaders and how can we be leaders if our leader is the one who is a servant and who is a, crucif a, cru a crucified person for the rest of us? Some of us might think that to be a leader means that we have to be like Bezos or Musk to have a big company and then we can have the title of leadership. But actually we are mistaken because every one of us is a leader. 
If we are leading our life somewhere, then we are leaders of our lives. Unless what leads our life is something else. Unless the things in our lives lead our life more than we have control over our life. So who is in charge in our lives? Is it the demanding ideals that we have in our minds? Is it the social expectations that we have in our minds and that give us self-worth? Do we judge our self-worth and other people's worth according to the following criteria? The car they drive, the house they live in, the income that they make, or the lifestyle they can afford, or the education they have. Are these the things that lead our life and we use it to judge other people's lives and worth? Recently, I visited a parishioner of ours who has been suffering from cancer for a long time. One thing that he told me that he regrets, that he many times pretended to be busy and thought that, oh, I don't have time to stay longer in the coffee hour. I did not have time to travel to see a faraway relative or a friend. I thought that I was busy, that I did not have time to build new friendships or to care for old friends and spend more time with them. We are surrounded by a culture that tells us that if you are not busy, then you are lazy. Your self-worth depends on keeping busy about something, even if sometimes you have to pretend to be busy so that you have enough self-esteem that I am not lazy and I am doing something. He told me that I discovered by the end of my life, now that I have suffered from cancer for a long time, that I wasted my time pretending to be busy and then I discover now that everything that I was with, busy with was worthless because I am dying. Sometimes we discover that the things that took the most of our time is worthless when we are about to die, but it's already too late. We could not change anything. So if we are leading our life somewhere, at least we have to lead our life to the destination that it's meant for us when we were created. Going on a trip to the destination that will be satisfying our yearnings, the destination that will pacify our anxieties, that will fulfill our emptiness and soothe our insecurities. All these troubles that we have in life are because of one simple thing, that we lead a life that does not have a direction, that goes wandering from place to place, and we don't have a compass that leads us to where we have to be. We are like the apostles today, that we think about the end goal as the kingdom and forget about the trip itself to lead us to that kingdom, which is a life sacrificed so that we can get the true life. That a life, the selfless and sacrificial life will overcome death and be granted the true life that is in Christ. If our life is not shaped after our master who came to be a servant, then our life is not going anywhere and will be worthless at the end. It is a big statement. Some people would say, like, how can I live a sacrificial life? Should I go and sacrifice my life and my belonging to, to the random person on the street? No, no one is saying that. God has put so many people in our lives that we have to be intentional about the way we treat them and we, the way we interact with them and relate to them. God has given us spouses, parents, children, friends, and relatives who are awaiting for our intervention in their lives. So if I cannot put my spouse as a priority before my selfish desires, how can I become like my Lord 
who sacrificed his life for total strangers. If I cannot prioritize my parents or my children in everything in my life, then how can I become like my Lord who sacrificed his life for strangers? So now as we get closer to the Holy Week, let us remember that on this journey, we need to walk with Christ. We might be next week happy about Palm Sunday and all the decorations and the candles and the clothes and the pictures and the social media and all this stuff. But remember, that's only the first step for a journey where Christ, at the end of it, will be crucified. And we are meant to walk with him, to remember that our life should be like his life, sacrificial in every minute. And on that way, to be crucified with him, let us shed aside all the things that will not stay when we are at the point of our death, all the things that we think we should busy our lives with, and they will be worthless when we are about to depart this world. Because what matters is the end is a Christian ending to our life where we deserve to be the true followers of Christ who is crucified but is risen from the dead for us. Amen.